As the primaries of the all ruling All Progressive Congress APC set to be held in a few days, the party appears divided on its choice of the party's flag bearer. And an aspirant of the African Democratic Congress ADC for the Lagos State gubernatorial elections joins us to discuss his plans for the state. Now this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. Now, there are strong indications uh, that the national officials are divided over a plan by President Muhammadu Buhari to pick his preferred candidate for the presidential ticket in the party. Now, the APC National Vice Chairman Northwest Malam Saliu Lukman, in an open letter to President Buhari, warned that picking a successor would be costly and risky for the president and the party. Now, according to him, a major disadvantage of the succession arrangements with governors choosing their successors is that it negatively affects the relationship between the successor and the predecessor. Also, feelers from a meeting of the All Progressive Congress's governors' meeting on Tuesday night indicated that the governors could not agree on a consensus and the fact that the president should pick the party's presidential candidate. Now, joining us to discuss this are Biodo Shomi and Adewala, Adewale, I beg your pardon, Adewala Justice, both are political analysts. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Gentlemen, can you hear me? Great, great, great. Good evening. Um, I'm going to start with you. Biad yes, Biad I'm going to start with you. Um, a lot of people have um, made their, um, you know, deductions from the president's statement as to um, picking a successor. Now, for the average person, when you hear about picking a successor, it, 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 what plays in your head is, let's take, for example, um, the Queen of England and who she anoints to take over from her, which would automatically be Prince Charles. But then we are in a democratic process, and so the average person is wondering, why would the president be talking about a successor in a democracy, especially at a time like this when the party seems to be... Um, um, ridden with that responsibility of picking someone who would be right and ripe for that ticket. Mr. Shomi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Now, in the battle, in, in the battle for, in the quest for succession within the uh, different, the major political parties, particularly. Uh, the PDP and APC. We have seen Atiku Abubakar emerge, you know, as uh, through a process of um, nomination and elections within the PDP. Now, back to the ruling party APC, uh, we have seen so many moves either aimed at truncating indirect primaries through the delegates, uh, the out of delegates um, elected, or, you know, in favor of consensus. In reality, there is nothing against uh, the law when you talk about consensus was been enshrined in the electoral act. Also, in the APC con uh, constitution, consensus is provided. But when you take account of what Mr. President is saying, Mr. President is talking about selection, not a consensus candidate. That is, somebody who he prefers, you know, to rule the country, you should be allowed to take and pick the person, and the person adopted as the candidate, as the candidate. That is totally different from where all the aspirants will agree on a particular individual, and then they will back that individual. Not for Mr. President to pick that individual. That is selection. It is not consensus. That is not in line with the spirit of the consensus arrangement within the Constitution or as envisaged by the electoral act. So therefore, what Mr. President is seeking to do through selection is not only anti-democratic, it undermines you know, internal party democracy, and it is a mark of a leadership suffering from democratic deficit. So there's no way how, in today's uh, democracy, a president can unpick his own successor and ask his party 
to abandon delegates no voting and just embrace uh, the person. It marks off some elements and a reminder of the history of leadership of Mr. President, which is a dictatorial military rule. That cannot be done in a democracy. Members of the political party should be allowed to freely choose who should represent the country, who they will present to represent the country in the presidential race. Okay. So any attempt aimed at undermining that process through the governors or any other group of people agreeing to consensus to a selection arena is uh, not only illegal, it is ultra biased. Uh, it, it can okay. never be right, okay. and it undermines internal party democracy. Let me come to you, Adeole Justice. Um, there are many who have made the um, uh, analogy that, um, you know, former President uh, Olusegun Obasanjo at some point was able also to pick his predecessor, uh, uh, rather to pick his um, successor, I beg your pardon, uh, and that why would it be wrong if President Buhari is also saying, well, this is who I want to succeed me. Also, forget it. I mean, they're, they're also saying that this is something that has been happening even at the state's level where governors impose their candidates on the party and then the party plays along. So why should we be uh, criticizing Mr. President if this has been the modus operandi? I've criticized the modus operandi. Hello, thank you very much. Hello, are we together? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Justice, I think that we're having a connection problem with you, so I'm just I, I'm gonna let you go and we'll try to see if we can get you on another line so that you can be clearer for us. Uh, but let me come back to you, Mr. Show me. I'm I'm tossing that question to you because uh, this is a follow-up to what you just said. There are those who are on the other divide supporting Mr. President. And like you also mentioned, it's been happening in states. Nobody has criticized that. Why should we be criticizing Mr. President? And if, for example, the party at some point had come together and said, well, Mr. President, we want you to be our flag bearer, even though it was not a, an all-out consensus, but this is what happened in his time for him to have emerged as the flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress. Um, now, people are saying, well, give us a chance to do um, you know, the same and pick somebody and say, well, this is who we want. Uh, and that will be by a delegate system. But what is really uh, wrong with those who are supporting Mr. President and saying, well, let him pick his own? Obasanjo did the same thing. Uh, well, you see, the fact that somebody stole is not a justification for another person to go and steal. Those who are hugging that Obasanjo did bring it. Uh, Jonathan at all forget the facts of history. They forget the fact that democracy was at in the post transition. We are expected to go back uh, in history, you know, in times, failing to learn anything from what happened there. When Obasanjo, you know, did that, what eventually happened to, to the regime that succeeded? You know, Yaradwa was a sick man. He was brought in. Is that succession plan? Mm. Is that what we want to start emulating now? Not only that, they should go to the state and name, apart from Lagos State, where we've been able to have a smooth succession plan. There is no other state in the country where the incumbent governor, you know, try to influence or impose the, 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 the successor. And we've, we've never had peace. No. Go and check what happened in an Anambra state, between Obi and Willie Obiago. Go to Imo state, between Oji Uzokalu and Teodere Uzokalu. Teodere Uzokalu was in prison. He was chief of staff. Mm. Oji Kalu brought him, make sure he won, you know, from prison. What happened? They fell apart. The same story is everywhere. We remember the last election in Ogun state. Amosu, the governor of Amosu backed a particular candidate who eventually, you know, did not make it. Attempts by governors, you know, to uh, impose successor has failed in many states and has succeeded in many states. But at the end of the day, um, we've never seen any peace. The John Lagos State, which is the only example you have in the old country. And when it comes to a country as big as Nigeria, with over 200 million people, how can one person, one person decide 
who would be the, nominee, the, the candidate of a political party that posts that it is the biggest in Africa. Mm -hmm. They're talking about over 50 million membership. And how can one person be allowed to do that? What Buhari is talking about is selection. That okay. is totally unacceptable. It is undemocratic. All what right. we are talking about is if they want to do consensus statement, they must get all the aspirants to agree. All of them. Otherwise, it will be illegal. So okay. there is no room for what Mr. President is trying to do, uh, trying to succeed himself. It reminds me of what Abacha tried to do with the two political parties, NRC and SDP, one to the left, one to the right, and wanting to transmit himself. Why would the serving president want to impose his own success? Okay. Okay. What is he hiding? What is the problem about it? Why can't the delegates be allowed to, to, to choose? Okay. In fact, if you go back to 2015, what did Mr. President did? He contested the families against Atiku Abubakar within the, uh, in the APC. And that was how he, he emerged. So why can't we build on it? Why do we want to go back in time, you okay. know, to the infancy stage when Oba Secure did it? Why can't we build, you know, on what they did in 2015 when they deepened internal party democracy? And if we can't deepen it, sustain it at that level, rather than going back to an era of imposition. You've asked and that me. is what I think uh, Mr. President needs to be mindful of. You've asked very interesting questions, but I think we have Mr. Justice back on the phone. Uh, Mr. Adewale Johnson, I'm, I'm sure you can hear me. So let me quickly go to um, what Mr. President said, and I'd like to quote him. The president explained um, the qualities of his successor, the qualities that his successor must possess, uh, and also went ahead to sort the backing of APC governors in picking the party's presidential tickets. I quote, I wish to solicit reciprocity and support of the governors and other stakeholders in picking my successor, who would fly the flag of the party for elections into the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The president urged the governors. Um, now, he, uh, this is not the first time Mr. President is talking about qualities that people who would work with him um, should possess. Remember, it took the president more than six months to pick his ministers at the beginning of his government um, after the uh, elections in 2015. And we, we, he, we, he kept saying that these people must possess certain qualities. But then looking at those ministers down the line, which a few of which the EFCC is after right now as we speak, should we really uh, be taking these lines that Mr. President has put down about the qualities of his successor and why he should be allowed to pick, you know, his successor um, and that the governors should support him. Should we, should it be anything to go by? Should, should it be something that we should hold on to or should it be jettisoned just as, um, you know, Luke Mann has admonished the party? Thank you very much. If I may share in the sympathy of Mr. Biodun Shoumi, and so many other Nigerians on this issue of uh, choosing a successor, and particularly the, the interpretation of what Mr. President has said, seeking the support of governor, APC governors and other major stakeholders in onboarding a successor. I want Nigerians to be appreciative of something. The present president of the country is a more or less democratized military, former military man. Because like uh, Mr. Biodun Shoumi has said, this is not the first time Nigerians are hearing this kind of, a, of, of an echo about onboarding a successor. But the fact remains that Nigeria and our polity has grown beyond a level where any single person can enforce or impose his choice on either the party or the nation. See, going by whatever definition, whatever the president might bear in mind, this abyss is declaration to what you have read out, would never, I mean, would never compel the current politicians in Nigeria, through, maybe through the governor or some other stakeholders, to adopt whoever the president might want to force on them. I want people to just be patient on something. I am sure of one thing. 
if the president has gotten a particular person he would love to support or to impose, that will have been disclosed or, or shown to people. But if I must be so sure of one thing, he is trying to seek to be more democratic. Because as the sitting president now is sending, he may not be able to single-handedly impose his choice on the system. That was why he is seeking the buy-in and the support, democratic support of governors. And but, other but, but why should that be Mr. President's call in the first place? I mean, I, I, I'm seeing that, you know, a lot of people are kicking against it. And, I, I mean, the president is also making a case that he wants to hand over to a non-corrupt leader. Um, no, and really, is this also, is this is the president also assuming that those people who are in the lineup of the APC <laughs> to run for that office are all corrupt. Is that what he's, he's insinuating? Because, I mean, he's call, he calls for concern, doesn't it? This is syntax. This is grammar. And this is sheer expression. And this can be interpreted in million and one ways. One thing I will say is what he has said is a generic expression. No right-thinking president will be willing to hand over to a corrupt successor. So he, the fact that he has said he wouldn't all, maybe if I may ask you, are you insinuating that some persons are corrupt in the lineup? Do you understand? So what he has just said is that people should watch out and choose whoever runs with the qualities he would love to have. As the current holder of that office he is in best position to appeal for other support in, in getting whoever succeeds him. Isn't that, isn't that too late in the day? And, and don't get me wrong. The president has, hold on, the president had canvassed for votes from Nigerians in 2014 yeah. based yeah. on the number one thing, which was fighting corruption. Number two, corruption. he was going to fight terrorism. Number three, he was going to give us employment. I do not know any of those things that has been really done. And so if the president is saying he wants to hand over to a person that is not necessarily corrupt, isn't that a tad bit late in the day? And how can he, Mr. President, be able to tell who is corrupt and who is not necessarily? And I'm asking because of the people who surround Mr. President. Yeah. Now, thank you very much. If you have been around the shores of Nigeria since the advent of this regime, you will see... In as much as the, the president of the executive has desired to fight corruption, you will see our policy and the judiciary has not been very helpful. You will hear of so many options of what a lot of people have seen as corrupt practices, but the court, the judicial system, unfortunately, did not end up killing such persons the way the system would have loved it. So we have a lot of um, SKPs from a true source that may be up to contesting this same position. So that's why the president was saying categorically that if the judiciary has not helped in taking off corrupt persons from the polity, but now there is a democratic means of eschewing such persons from becoming a successor. Hmm. Back to you, Mr. Shoumi. What damage do you think that this move that by Mr. President, or supposed move, or this appeal by Mr. President to be allowed to pick a successor of sorts, what kind of damage will it, could it do to the party and, of course, those who are in the running for this office? It will, it will certainly cause a lasting damage. Uh, if Mr. President is allowed to do what he's trying to do, um, in the sense that, one, we should not forget that we are not in a monarchical system. We are in a democratic system of government. And therefore, the issue of internal party democracy cannot be sacrificed under the witches of uh, the desire of Mr. President. It will make a mess, a total mess of all the good work being done by INEC to promote internal party democracy. There is no way how only one person can be allowed to choose his own successor. That is no longer democracy. Get to that level. Again, uh, the APC needs to worry about the electorate. Uh, many electorates will view this as totally unacceptable. There is no doubt that many people are disgruntled in Nigeria today 
as a result of the one of the failings of this government, which is um, uh, on the security issue. I'm not saying Buhari's government failed totally. You know, there's no government that failed totally. They did well in some areas. But the most important thing, which the Constitution actually prescribed as the sole essence of anybody being in government, which is the protection of lives and the uh, security of lives and properties of the people, the government has woefully failed. I'm afraid I need to, to say it as it is. You know, in that area, to the extent that the country is more divided than ever, you know, the schism is so deep, you know, and it has led to ethnic distrust, you know, and disarmament. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, how why should Mr. President be allowed to choose his own successor in that situation? If you talk about corruption, yes, I don't have any evidence to accuse Mr. President of corruption, but I have enough, I've seen enough to know that many people in government chosen by Mr. President, were found one thing, one way or the other. You won't forget about the multi-million naira uh, gas scandal that involves uh, Babache Lawal. We had so many other scandals, including the current one at the accountant general of the Federation, 170 billion naira. Mm -hmm. Only for the next person acting in his capacity is also facing EFCC. So therefore, I'm not sure Mr. President alone can be trusted, you know, to, uh, to, to, to select a candidate which you know, will be uh, free of corruption. I think that should be left for Nigerians. Nigerians should be left to decide who they will prefer. It's like what is in the Bible, you know, when Jesus Christ and Barnabas were presented to the people, the people, Pilate, you know, the people were allowed, Pontius Pilate allowed the people mm -hmm. to decide. Do you want Barnabas or do you, you want Jesus? They chose the team. Mm -hmm. So let the people decide what they want. It shouldn't be the exclusive reserve of Mr. President. What he's trying to do is not a consensus. Okay. Um, as if you said in the Constitution, and also the, uh, the APC uh, 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 Constitution, what he's okay. trying to do is selection, to okay. select a candidate and get others to back it. I don't think that is right. That will have a huge ramifications, and I'm afraid that maybe, you know, voters backlash at the end of it. Okay, finally, um, Mr. Justice, um, quickly, what do you see happening on the weekend? Because it's, it's, it's just around the corner. Um, there have been so many, um, you know, people have made all kinds of assumptions as to who the president wants to give, you know, his vote or support to. I mean, this obviously came to a lot of people as a surprise when the president decided that he was going to pick someone uh, to succeed him. But what do you see playing out over the weekend as we get ready for it? Thank you very much. The weekend is, is, is so close. And one of two things will definitely happen. Either a complete dispatter of the APC or a stronger party emerging from the activity of the weekend. Because it is sure the emergence of a flag era for the party definitely will result from one of many processes. If the process that will produce the flat bearer is as desired by the stakeholders of the party and the electorate presently at the convention, then there is success. But of an assurance, if any other thing comes to fall without the buying of the stakeholders, with what Nigeria and Nigerians are presently, I can assure you that will be an early obituary of the party. And like my, my, the, my brother just said that, you see, Nigerians have graduated beyond the level of imposition. Nobody can impose anybody on any party again. Gone are those days. Okay. You understand? Okay. So the weekend is close by, and very many things would unfold. But at the end of which, only one will be visible to everybody. Well, Thank you. The weekend is pregnant with uh, a lot of surprises that may uh, <laughs> come to light. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you, Biodo Shomi and Adewale Ademola Justice. Thank you, gentlemen. Both are political analysts. Thank, thank you for being part of the conversation. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. When we come back, we will be talking with the gubernatorial aspirant for the ADC right here in Lagos State. Stay with us.